Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at tilting moments, so we can answer questions from exercise 4e. So same moment stuff as we've been looking at before, same two strategies we're going to be using to solve these problems here, only that in this problem here where we have a uniform rod length 4 metres, mass 12 kilograms, resting on pivots 0.5 metres away from each end, so uniform rods will mean the mass it will be in the centre, this time we have a mass that's been plopped on the right hand side. Uh, we don't know how big this mass is, but we are told that the rod is on the turning point about D. So we're going to be specifically looking at this phrase here. What does this phrase mean and how does it affect our moments diagram here? Well, if our force is on the, if our beam is on the point of turning around D, that means that if I was just to increase the amount of uh, mass on this right hand side here, then it would start to tilt on the onto the right hand direction downwards um, and, and flip over pivot D. Um, but M is the perfect amount of force to keep it perfectly stationary. Um, any increase in that force will rotate it around this pivot D. Effectively what's happening in this situation at the moment is all the force is being, all the moments are being transferred through D and none of the forces are being transferred through C because there's this opposite weight on the other side of the D pivot that's effectively now allowing the pivot C to become useless effectively. We can effectively remove the pivot at C and therefore remove the reaction force at C and nothing would happen to this diagram here. It would still stay in equilibrium because it's on the point of rotating around D, whereby if I increase the value of M by a smidgen, it would start to rotate around D. So therefore, there is no reaction force at C. You can class the reaction force as zero if you want to, and you can e effectively think about considering uh, removing the pivot at C altogether. All of the moments are being transferred through this pivot D that's why it's on the point of turning around D. So if the rod is on the turning point around D, then there is no reaction force at C. Uh, the rod is barely in contact with the support at C, about to move upwards as it rotates around D. Okay, so what we can effectively say then is that there is no reaction force at C and there is no pivot at C, or the pivot is useless. So if we want to now work out the value of this mass here, we're going to take moments around this point D here using strategy number two. Clockwise moments will equal anti-clockwise moments. Now in the case here, we're going to have a moment on the anti-clockwise direction of 1.5 meters times 12 G. And on the right hand side, we're going to have a clockwise moment of 0.5 times Mg. Divide by the 0.5, and we work out here that M is going to equal, whoops, 36 kilograms. Great. Another quick question here then. A non-uniform rod of length AB is 10 meters of weight 40 newtons, and it's suspended from a pair of light cables C and D, where A to C is 3 meters and B to D is 2 meters. So let's go ahead and draw that diagram in there. Uh, it's a non-uniform rod, so I can't just whack the um, whack the center of mass in at the center. Uh, when a weight of mass 2, 25 newtons is hung from point A, the, po the rod is on the point of rotation uh, around C, we assume. Um, find the distance of the center of mass from the point A. So in this case here, the center of mass is probably going to be located on the right hand side of C, given that as we add a 25 newton force to the e point A, it's now going to be on the point of rotating around this point C here. It's on the point of rotation. If it's on the point of rotation around C, we can effectively cut the cable at D, and nothing would happen to this question here. It's on the point of rotation around C, so therefore we've got the diagram here. Okay, so in this case here, we're going to take moments around C and balance out the moments on the left-hand side of cable C and the moments on the right-hand side of cable C. 
What we'll probably do for now is we'll set the distance from C to the center of mass to be X, uh, and then we'll work out 3 plus X afterwards. So in this case here where we're taking moments around C, this first force is going to be an anti-clockwise moment of 3 times 25. And on the right hand side it's going to be a moment of X times 40, so it's going to be 40X. And then when we do the division, group like terms, divide, we get 1.875. But then, of course, it's the distance from A that we're looking for. So add on 3 to that. Uh, whoops. And it's going to be 4.875. Lovely. There we are. OK, so your turn to have a go at this question here then. Pause the video and try this question out. Right, OK then, let's have a go at this question then. So we have a plank from A to B of mass 12 kilograms. Uh, anything about it being uniform? It's a uniform rod, great, so I can then add in my 12 g-force in the centre. Length 3 metres, so that would be 1.5 to each end. Um, we have a pivot point at C, which is 0 0.7 metres. So then if it's 1.5 to the centre, this will be 0 0.8 metres. And we also have a pivot point at D, where this is 1.1 metres. So this is D, C, 1.1 metres. And the distance to here to here will must be 0 0.4. OK, a buoy of mass 32 kilograms stands at point E. The plank is then on the point of tilting around the pivot D. So therefore, C is useless. By modelling the plank as a uniform rod and the buoy as a particle, calculate the distance from A to E. Well, if, every th if all the forces are centred around D, then the buoy must be standing at a point around this position here. We'll call the distance from D to E the value X, and then we'll add on 0.7, add 0.8, add 0.4. So, in this case here, the buoy weighs 32 kilograms, so 32 G. And for this question, I'm going to be taking moments around the point D. So the first force, which is going to, which is the first moment, which is going to be the anti-clockwise moment, is 0.4 times 12 G. And this is going to be equal to uh, X times 32 G. Uh, we can cancel out the g's from both sides, and let's start to do some calculations then. So it's going to be 0 0.4 times 12 divided by 32, and that gives us 0 0.15 as the value for x. And that does make sense because the 12g force is only 0 0.4 distance, and 32g does is a lot more than 12g, so it would make sense for the buoy to be standing quite close to the pivot if it's only balancing out a 12 G Newton weight. Okay, uh, so that's not the final answer. The distance from A to E then is equal to 0 0.7 add 0 0.8 add 0 0.4 add 0 0.15. I'm effectively adding up all of these distances from here to here. No, and, and all the way to here as well. Um, so in this case here, we're going to get uh, point, sorry, uh, 2.05 metres. Let me just double check that on the calculator. I not want to get that wrong. Yeah. Lovely, 2.05. So that's the final answer for this question here then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 4e, have a go at the problem solving ones, the exam style questions, and then have a go at the mixed exercise ones to see how you're getting on with this in general. We haven't covered many of the moments questions where we're having to resolve forces um, uh, where we've got things happening at an angle. We're going to save that for, um, for in the future where we are um, equating things in equilibrium and we have to resolve forces. So if you see a question that's got a funny angle in it, don't worry, we are going to be covering that later on in these series of videos. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching.